We're in hard times and some of us are going to need a lawyer. And if you need a lawyer, don't just react to a TV commercial. Get a copy of the Lawyer's Consumer Directory, which is available absolutely free of charge at any 7-Eleven store throughout Central Florida. The Lawyer's Consumer Directory is going to give you real hardcore knowledge on how to hire a lawyer and a lot of information on issues like bankruptcy, foreclosure, and more. Get the Lawyer's Consumer Directory. It's absolutely free of charge at any 7-Eleven throughout Central Florida. The Christian Star began as a newspaper whose news focus of interest was of Christians. But it's become a lot more than that, covering issues of concerns to our community, covering issues of national, state, local, and political agendas that affect us today. The Christian Star is available free at any 7-Eleven store. So pick up your copy of the Christian Star Bilingo free at 7-Eleven today. Ahora puedes demostrar tu orgullo hispano mientras manejas en la carretera con la nueva tablilla o placa de auto hispana conmemorando los 500 años del descubrimiento de Florida por Juan Ponce de León. Obtén tu tablilla hispana este año y harás la diferencia. Nuestra comunidad se beneficiará con más programas y servicios. Resalta nuestra cultura, nuestras raíces. Hi, I'm Danny Ramos and welcome to this week's edition of Hispanic Speak Out TV. We have been on the air on Bright House Cable Network for 13 years talking about issues that are pertinent to the Hispanic community and how Hispanics affect the community at large. Uh, we have an interesting show today, a little bit, a good, good talk show. Let's see uh, how our Democratic friend on the end, uh, you're, you're a conservative Republican? Yes. I'm an independent. And he's a way left out <laughs> liberal. We're going to have a, I'm only kidding around. We're going to have a good show today. Um, we're, I'm Danny Ramos, and this is Adam Sudbury. He's an attorney. And uh, Jose Miranda from Radio Fame on 810. And he's been with us now for over a year as a co-host for Hispanic Speak Out. Um, Adam, I know that you, you came to the show to talk about a specific. We got a little bit of um, civil rights issues. Why don't we start off with you and, and um, what's going on? Sure. Well, one of the things that's happening right now is, that's, that's really, uh, in, in my view, very disturbing. Um, the, the entire Bill of Rights is under attack. Um, we've got the First Amendment's under attack, Second Amendment's under attack, Fourth Amendment's under attack. And specifically, um, I have to say, Danny, the, uh, a few weeks ago when Edward Snowden came out and exposed um, the surveillance program from the NSA, that was incredibly disturbing to me. Um, you know, reading all of that stuff and what the government is compiling on every single person here in America and abroad is, is just, I mean, number one, it's a violation of the law, and number two, it's just incredibly disturbing. So you are okay with Snowden exposing this? See, that's the thing. Everyone wants to make this about Snowden, all right? Snowden breached his contract and broke the law, okay? That's clear. There's no doubt about that, those two facts, okay? He, he, he had a confidentiality agreement, and he also had a secret, uh, top secret security clearance, and he exposed government secrets. But the question is not whether Snowden broke the law or what Snowden's doing or whether Snowden's going to be prosecuted. The question is, what is our government doing? And so even though he may have broken the law, I will tell you right now, if I were ever on a jury sitting in uh, judgment of his actions, I would not convict him of anything. But you're saying he broke the law no matter what. If you break the law, you're guilty of an infraction, so you have to pay some kind of a price. The, the, in other words, you're saying that the means justified the end. I'm saying that if Snowden exposed, which he did, an incredible constitutional violation on the part of our government, then I believe that he has done um, a just thing. And, you know, the, the jury's still going to be out on, on what he does next, because right now, I mean, he's been, to, he's been to Hong Kong, he's been to Moscow. I mean, you know, if he starts harming the country by turning over state secrets to other governments beyond what what we already know I mean it could be a different story but so you're saying his initial intent was good but maybe out of fear we don't know what's in his head 
but possibly out of fear, he's on the run. Maybe he fears for his life. You know, these things happen. You know, if, I mean, anyone's, if anyone's seen the Boone uh, supremacy, the, bo mm -hmm. the yeah. Boone identity, yeah. a born, born identity, identity. Born. I mean, it's, I'd be pretty scared too. Yeah, I remember uh, when a lawyer landed up in a park dead uh, and he was politically sensitive and giving information. Um, so you're saying that the means... Just, what we're looking at right now, what I think we're looking at right now, Adam, is we're looking possibly at a tremendous social change in the structure and concept of what this country is. It may, be, right. it may be the result, like, you know, there was the Industrial Revolution, and then there was the next revolution, the Information Age. Now we're looking at a whole different age for the development of this country, where we can no longer uh, consider privacy as a liberty. And maybe the government is now, it just came out, and they've been doing it, maybe Snowden was the mechanism, to push that out publicly. But I think that we just, it's not an occurrence, it's a tremendous social change that we may be going under as a nation. More like countries that we used to say that we're doing it the wrong way. Okay, the country has changed since 9-11. Okay, drastically. We had to change to adapt to the new environment, a combative environment, if you will, okay, against terrorism. And they had to adapt new ways, and, and those ways were very unclear starting out. So I think it's a growing process in how they develop their intelligence skills to get to where we can get and, and get to the bad guys individually. You know, sir, I see your point, Jose. What, I, what, I, what I'm afraid of is, is that it's an experiment in process. It's like everything else. It's like when a government entity becomes so big, they can never dismantle it again. You know what I mean? And I think that this thing has gotten so big, like they're building these facilities now, that have in come out Utah. publicly in Utah, and these facilities, their sole job, once they build that facility, they're spending billions and billions of dollars, and they're not going to turn it off. Every, there's financial benefit there. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to turn it off. So that's going to be something that's going to be an ongoing process. Maybe but, we're but getting is. hit. They, they've done it in combat. We're going from the Vietnam conflict. I know, but conflict. I'm not in combat. We've done it from the Vietnam conflict, where, where we had to learn how to fight in the jungle, mm -hmm. fight more in small bands, as opposed to groups. We made the adaption into the deserts and stuff like that. And that's not an easy process. It's a long process. I think the Americans are so used to quick and easy fixes that this isn't like, oh my God, this is happening. But this isn't Burger King. You know, you can't have it my way all the time. You, you have to make some adaption and it's going to take a while. Well, then they have to change the Constitution. Well, look at what they're actually doing. I mean, we're discussing this but no one's actually said what they're doing. Let, listen to what they're doing. They have secret courts meeting in secret. The Pfizer. Pfizer court, right. okay? They've got these orders directed to Verizon, to AT&T, to, you know, mm -hmm. all of Microsoft. these companies. Microsoft. They've got these court orders out there directing these companies to suck, to, to turn over to the government all of their information. Do you know what you can do with all of the records of someone's someone's phone records, all of that metadata, you can track, every, you can look at where they've been, um, track every single phone number that they called, um, calls coming in, text messages going in and out, and, and the geolocation ability of that. It's an incredible privacy violation. You, and here's the key, hold on, here's the key. The Constitution does not permit it. What the Constitution allows is for the government to request that information when they have probable cause. They are collecting it on everybody and then saying, well, we need it in case we need it. And when you look at what the IRS is doing, they've, they've politically motivate, motivated witch hunts, um, suppressing conservative groups. You look at what, what, what else is going on. It is a cause for alarm. It's, it truly is. It's a cause for more than alarm. And if, and this is, it's, it's, it's a major fear. You, we're looking at the possible collapse of the Constitution of the United States and American way of freedom. You look at the, the economic data that's out there, there's a coming calamity, and I, I mean, I use this on my social site, I believe that they are setting up a turnkey coup d'etat. I mean, it, that's what it could ultimately come down to. They have everyone's information, they have all your credit card transactions, it's all in a database. Okay, how's a turnkey coup d'etat supposed to work there, sir? Well... 
when there when there's a massive collapse, whoever's in charge, we we'll just go use collect people. Yeah. It, I mean, I'm <laughs> listen look, right now. They, I'm, I'm telling look, you, I'm alarmed. I, okay. I'm, I'm a, okay. I, I remember this guy. thing with, with with carbon date. Some some company that says we'll keep all your data. You pay us. Right. Ten dollars a month, and we'll make sure all your stuff is backed up. Where did that come from? All of a sudden, I'm going to give all of my personal information to a company that I don't even know. Right. And I know the way companies work. There's mm -hmm. some guy on the third floor. He's going to start. I got nothing to do. You know, it's late at night. I'm going to look at all this stuff that these people have. That's reading it. Well, tell me. In Not the only Constitution. That, but let me let me get you another one. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about all this stuff where you drive in the car? Oh, let me call up the guy in the sky just in case I get a flat mm -hmm. tire. He knows every time I make a left hand turn. Right. But it's not about the company. The co it's fine for a private company to have that information. But when you pull that information, the OnStar, the Verizon records, the credit card data from right. Visa, you pull all of the information from Microsoft, from Facebook, and you put it in a single place, you have the ability to track associations, track people. Are we track talking their about their, they're not, tracking not their phone that. numbers, not individuals? And while we're at it by the Constitution, we're in the Constitution that Easy Pass, okay. All well, right. Easy, easy Pass still tracks you and knows exactly where you're going, okay, yeah, on the highway pass system. Is, is a state. It's still open to every anybody that can tap into it if they want to, or if they have the access. Like Mr. Snowden, I use him as, as, as an abstract. I use it as an abstract. Here's a guy who's not educated per se, okay, who was given top safety clearance, which I still have an issue with. Well, we don't, really, we don't really know what's okay. behind that. And, and well, they contract out. So, so as long you as they con know contract out, this guy got in there with a flash drive, which is all. What I'm that saying is to unbelievable you, to me. I don't know what, how that happens. What, what I'm saying to you is that the same way this individual got into things, people get into things. Do you think he's a traitor? Okay. I want to say on one hand, we needed to have this discussion about intelligence in our country and how we go about it, especially how we go about it in post 9-11, as we try to catch up with the rest of the world who has been dealing with terrorism for years and years and years. In retrospect, we're still kids in the park, and these guys are advanced, and we're trying to catch up to them. And when we're trying to avoid being as evil as they are to to even the stakes, okay, because we work by all these rules. You're a combat guy. You know we have all these little rules. We can't do it. Snowy day, rainy day, you know, <laughs> a holiday. We can't do it. You know, we have kumbaya times and that kind of stuff. But I'm talking about we needed to have that discussion. But because we're behind the times, we're still in a, in a process where we're learning how to, to, to formulate what we need to do. And unfortunately, we have individuals not necessarily the whole entire government, but we have individuals that absolute power corrupts. That ability to well, have what, that insight. That's what he was saying, because you're taking all that information, you're putting it into one core. Right. Who is in charge of that core? It's going to be a guy. It's some individual. And that individual is going to be able to erase you from and the that planet. that individual, well, Snowman, he's, he's, he's that individual. No, he's not the Snowden? big guy. Yeah. No. Snowden he's, is not, the, he's not the big guy. He's not the, it's his determination what's right or wrong for us. Do we Who, need to know it? Yes. No, he, uh, that's he not need, true. He needed to know. They have reports of him, alleged reports mm -hmm. of him, that he, he joined the NSA simply to get as secrets. That yeah, would make it a treasonous affair. Yeah, but that's, oh, that's allegedly. A, but but I said allegations. The game is not out. What, what okay. we do know, got it. Yeah. No, I, I just, see, you, you said they can erase you. That's not the danger. The danger isn't that they can erase you. I mean, that's that's they could, you know, because they, they just locate. Well, I mean, disrupt your records. life, destroy exactly. you. Exactly. But here's if you don't the fall danger. In line. Here's the danger. The people in control of the government, with all of that information, they can control you because information is power. Right. They, if they know, you know, they can control members of Congress. Like, you know, how many members of Congress of Congress are having affairs? I mean, who knows? But the ones that are, they have all that information. They have all the phone numbers, everything to piece that together and then leverage that against those people. And it's a means of control. The people in control of that information have the ability to control the government. And ultimately, it's very, well, it's very happening. dangerous. It's happening. It's going to continue to happen. There's, the reality is they're building a building that they're spending, I don't know how much, you know, and, and they're not going to stop building the building. 
So it's, and that's it, a, a once, giant database exactly. in Utah. The only purpose is to store all this information. So once that thing gets the turn on button, it's over. Privacy is over in the United States of America. No. They, yes, no. absolutely. Unless it's stopped. Absolutely. We, and, and we it have can laws. Be stopped. It can we, be stopped. we have laws. We have people we vote into office. We need to have common sense approach to the things that we're doing. That's all we need. Common sense approach with people who believe that we can make changes. If you go with the concept we can't make any change, then you're absolutely right to end this year. Well, who's ever controlling the money is the guy who's who's making the change. I don't make enough. You can. What am I do? Get together with you and say, okay, we're going to fight this. Listen, you're talking about a, a, a small group of guys who can expend a hundred million dollars if they want to to do whatever they want. Well, that's true, but that's always been that way. So yeah, then, so but how now that? it's absolute power corrupts absolutely. How have we overcome? How do we overcome that? We went through the '30s. We went to the Roosevelts. We went to the to the because Truman's we're in a whole how, different how, era now. No, it, we're in an information still, era. All it is is you just change it. it. It just changes to a new format. The same format has been around for ages. Okay, the tools are different, oh, the, and the bit, tools the make I, it dictatorial. The idea has been the same control. Now you I, I, it's a whole different the government to do this. That's uh, the central government. There's a problem. You can escape any state. You just move. You cannot escape the federal government. They yeah. have jurisdiction over all of us. And Listen, we just ran out of time. We're going to take a break now. We'll be right back um, to talk a little bit more. Stay tuned. Ahora puedes demostrar tu orgullo hispano mientras manejas en la carretera con la nueva tablilla o placa de auto hispana conmemorando los 500 años del descubrimiento de Florida por Juan Ponce de León. Obtén tu tablilla hispana este año y harás la diferencia. Solo mil se necesitan para hacerla permanente. Su donativo ayudará a estudiantes con becas. Nuestra comunidad se beneficiará con más programas y servicios. Resalta nuestra cultura, nuestras raíces. Demostremos que la unión está a la fuerza. Obtén tu tablilla hispana en el departamento de vehículos de motor más cercano o llama hoy al 321-277-0850. Hi, I'm Danny Ramos and we're here with Glenda Chauncey and Jose Miranda with Hispanic Speak Out TV, brought to you on Bright House every Tuesday night at 9.30 p.m. We've been on the air for 13 years talking about political, educational, and social issues that have to do primarily with the Hispanic community. But every time, every now and then, we, we go out of that line um, because there are bigger issues that affect our community, and we discuss those bigger issues. One of those issues is uh, an ex uh, Glenda is an expert on, and that's the foreclosure situation going on in Florida, particularly. Glenda, you have some more information of something that's been happening? Well, we do know uh, now that HB 87 has been signed and it is in action and it's happening very quickly. In fact, it's uh, July 1st. Okay, HB 87, there. tell folks what HB 87 is. HB 87 basically is speeding up foreclosures. Um, pretty much don't have that law of time where you can uh, get a little extra time to work with your lender, move pretty quickly, uh, motions, the way that they're going to be handled, um, you know, mediations to uh, just a lot of things that are going to speed it up. Basically, um, a lot of these foreclosures have been sitting on the docket for, for a long time, and it's not due to the homeowners. A lot of it is due to the banks and their inefficiencies, which we'll talk about mm -hmm. that in a moment, um, of where they're just sitting on the docket. So they feel they need to speed these up and get them off the docket as quickly mm -hmm. as possible. So you're going to see a lot of families that are not represented, unfortunately, that have been working with banks, and the banks are telling them, yes, we can help you. We're going to modify you. We're not going to foreclose on your property, and then boom, here comes the notice they're going to get evicted or mm -hmm. they're going to have to leave their property. So uh, being that right now in our community, we've got over 10,000 children homeless in, uh, in our community in Central Florida. I'm really, really nervous about what's about to happen to our community. I think it's going to get really, really bad. Okay. What's going on with Bank of America? Well, Bank of America came out last Friday up in Boston. Um, there were six employees that came forward into discussing on how they were instructed to lie to homeowners. In fact, that's the, that's the caption of the, uh, of the article. Mm -hmm. And what they were basically instructed to do was to lie to the homeowners to say, uh, yes, we have, uh, we're, we're missing parts of your package, or we don't have this, we don't have that. You know, I used to call the vortex of faxing. Right. Um, you know, where are these documents going? 
So basically they were instructed to lie to the homeowners to say that they had not received their application, they had not received a whole package of information. And on top of it, they were given an incentive and the incentive was if they were able to get families to go into a foreclosure situation, one out of 10 families, they were given an incentive of a Target gift card or a Bad Bath, Bath and Beyond gift card. Um, and this was all brought out this am past I, Am I in the twilight zone or what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like, I know you're saying it. I know, but you can and, you know, <laughs> and, I, and, and I trust what you're saying, but that's really, really so far out yeah. that you gotta wonder well, I will, I will tell you this, that, you know, when this federal government was imposed under the Bush administration, so, you know, we got to talk about that, and then, of course, it fell over and spilled over into the Obama administration. So, quite frankly, I think what's happened is the super PACs, the banks, have control. They have the money. They're going to do whatever they want to do because there's no penalties and there's no legal action against them. So, we've got legal documents, fraud all over the place. It's been proven. We're paying out homeowners for legal stuff that they know that they did illegal behavior. You know, it, it is the twilight zone. I mean, who, who does that? Who stands for anything like that? And I think... And they're too big to prosecute. And I think that, well, that's what Eric Holder said, right. you know. Um, he came right out and said it. He said they're just too big to prosecute. Well, really, Iceland didn't feel that way. And what, a couple years ago, they went in, they took over the banks, put the executives in prison, and now their economy is back on track two years later. So I just, you know, I just really... The well, that's not going to happen in the United States. But why? Why? Because they're too big. That's why. <laughs> I mean, you know, we, 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 our system is based upon lobbyists. The yeah. political system is based upon lobbyists. What do lobbyists do? Yeah. They're influence peddlers. They get paid to pay people. Yeah. Well, but the federal government, I mean, when they put out this modification, make a home affordable, now it's called the HAMP. I mean, there's so many names that they have now. You know, what people didn't realize through the federal government, every time you submitted an application, the banks get paid by that application. Okay. A lot of people don't know that. And mm -hmm. Obama actually came out and spoke about it, and then all of a sudden he was going to stop, you know, paying them this money, and then he never heard anything about it again. So, again, that control, I mm -hmm. agree with you. The sad part about this, somebody like me who has helped families for the last six years, how frustrating it is when you are sending documents, sending documents, and they've lost them, they've lost them. And now to finally know that you're not the crazy one, because I used to say, what is it, a vortex? I don't understand what's going on here. I just mm -hmm. sent you a full package. How do you have all the pages, you know, numbered one through 50, but you're missing number 48? It never made sense to me. And this now state is the sense. highest in we the country? We are the highest. Do you know, uh, right now in the I'm state I'm shocked of, by that, oh, yeah. by the way, that we're the highest. I just, we, we are the highest. And <laughs> And with <laughs> we're, 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 we're such a man it's sad. We're, we're such an open-minded state. I just find it shocking, and we're led by well, one of the greatest a, governors yeah, the in greatest the world. Yeah, the greatest governor of all world, time. You know yeah, yeah. So. I know. I, I have can't. nothing good to say about that man at okay. all. Okay, let's let's change the horses right now. Supreme Court strikes part of the Voting Rights Act. Jose, 1965. Okay, that's uh, when you were born, right? <laughs> <laughs> 1965. This country went through a tremendous change, okay? And this bill that was passed was to um, have equality uh, of the voting issues. That makes it right. So it doesn't make one side has an advantage over the other side in terms of voting and, and places to vote and things like that. Because all over the country, this last election, for example, you saw seven, eight, nine, ten hours of waiting especially here in Florida where we're so open-minded about voting. Okay, so aside from that, that great visual that we already have, uh, the Supreme Court in its wondrous ways has decided to strike that down and say well, all it's forgiven for the nine states in the South because there's no such thing as black and white issues anymore. We've okay. arrived, okay? They, they haven't exactly <laughs> said that and we, everybody's we've up arrived. in a flurry. We've arrived. What, what they have Absolutely. said is, yeah, they, everybody's as flipping you, out. As you as a chaplain, you should yeah. be relieved. No, There's what, no longer, racism is done okay. in the United States. This is We're not cool. what that's saying. This is not what this that's is saying. This is cool. That's, that's an interpretation. It's I not an interpretation. Well, that's why, that's why that, that, was, that I, law was can, enacted. Okay. Tell me why that law was enacted. Well, what's happened is, let me, let me enlighten you, my friend. That's racism, okay. man. You what, enlighten what's happened, me? Man? Yeah, I, I like enlighten you. Enlighten. Listen, we're both Puerto Ricans, so don't hate <laughs> me. <laughs> I think I'm the only one who can say anything right now. <laughs> let me give it to you real quick. What they're saying is that there are specific states and specific districts 
that had to report to the federal government every time they made a change in their voting laws. In the South. Not, in the South. In, 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 Shocking. Wait a second. In the South. No, no, oh my I'm God. sorry. New York was in there at that time. Okay. For, um, California, okay. New York, um, they Virginia. They could opt out if okay. they, if but they let me finish met, my met thing. the criteria. Let me finish. Right. Let me finish. Since that time, the Demo at that time, you'd have an example of a particular district that was 75% white, 25% black. Mm -hmm. Now what they're saying is that over time, right. over time, the demographics have changed. Okay. So now, for example, there is a specific district who fell on, that fell under that, mm -hmm. that is 70% black and 30% other. Okay. Not even white, other. So what they're doing is they're saying that the law has to be adjusted for those demographic changes, not eliminating the law, that adjusted geographically. You're right. Why, why was that even matter doing. for the state of Florida? We can't even count our votes properly. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what does it really matter at this point? We, they're we doing their wrong. best. You think it's easy taking off your shoes to count? <laughs> Honestly, you think it's that difficult? <laughs> it's very Seriously. difficult in Florida to do that. Hey, listen, you know what? I always hear people saying, I love Florida. I love to live here. Yeah. Well, you know what? That's part of the enlightenment that we came here. Yes. You're a New Yorker. And I'm I, a New Yorker. And I'm totally Where are you from, by the way? I was born and raised in Florida. So. Look at that. You're enlightening people. You've become part of the enlightened class of Florida. Aren't you proud? <laughs> I'm now the transplant. Okay, so yes. now they, they've taken your, they've shaved you down. Now you can talk and you yeah. can, you know. Oh, isn't that nice? I was and, able you're to you're take a, and you're a woman. You, imagine <laughs> that. This, real quick, the strike down of this, this particular law would they're allow. They're not striking it down. The, they're re. They're, they've gone they're, to Congress they're and they're this. rewording it I know, for specific and, demographic. And I'll give you Virginia, for example, who. Uh, wants to reduce... Can you make it less than three hours because we're running out of time? We'll reduce, reduce the voting places that you can go to from 58 down to 12. 200 and, and 250... Is that part uh, of this bill? It's, it will affect uh, uh, them. No. It will Jose, affect them. Jose, Jose, no, 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 This no, no. bill is going you know, back one to of the, the Congress. One of the problems we will is, say, is listen, that... We're running out of time. Okay. I hate to tell you this. We're running out of time, man. <laughs> one of you the know, problems we is... We can bring this up next week. I promise. I'm going to bring you the aluminum hat. You, look, we're yeah, going to bring... I think by then what, more things will come out anyway. Yes, we'll yes. We'll discuss it. Okay. But the Done reality deal. is they're not talking about eliminating the law. All they're doing is changing the reporting system for certain geographic locales that are no longer what they were 40 years ago, 50 years ago. Okay. They are now black dominant areas. They don't have to report. Okay. They don't have to report. A black dominant area doesn't have to report its voter changes anymore. Well, let's hope it's That's what it's happening. It All right. Let's hope. This is Danny Ramos, Hispanic <laughs> Speak Out TV. We'll see you next week, and we will enlighten you. <laughs>